more cool looking blades. And since they share the same lineage, I'm going to knock out another two for one knife review, old school style, right here on the reviewing table. Which, by the way, is wearing a decidedly non tactical blue background. Works perfectly thematically with these two knives I'm going to talk about. Hi, everybody. This is, of course, Nothing Fancy Talking, running a little something something I call the Nothing Fancy Project. Now going on into year three, TNP for short. Folks who have been following the project for any length of time probably already know one of my key missions is to search out and find the coolest, highest value, most useful gear for your systems. Here come two more knives that will do just that from CRKT. Yep, that company is uh, catching up in the number of video reviews in front of my camera, Columbia River Knife and Tool. If you were to count the numbers, you'd probably see they are somewhat behind the other manufacturers, and there's a simple explanation for that, and I'll be deadly honest with you. It's because some of the blades I just have not been super stoked on. The good news is that is totally changing at CRKT. Some of their 2011 models are just outstanding. Their collaborations, just like these, very exciting for me. Uh, by the way, speaking of collaborations, these are the product of a very young designer called Jerry McGinnis. I hope I got your name right. And he did just a fabulous job in designing these two blades. I guess I haven't introduced them yet. Here it comes. The Suma 1165 is this model. Satin, plain edged, 1165 Suma. This one is called the Premonition. This is the 1162 Satin Plain Edge. I have a couple other versions rolling in front of the camera, in front of the camera here in a second. Great knives, great job from such a young designer. The youngest ever at CRKT is what the bio says. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a scratchy throat tonight. What their bio says that uh, Jerry is 20 years old. Great job, engineering student at North Carolina State. By the way, the rudder for me to identify cool knives like this, cool gear, doesn't matter what it is, guns, knives, tactical gear, it are my own preferences. That is my guide. you know, And I remain very, very true to that, that I have distinct preferences. I have a great way of filtering out nonsense, as you have seen in front of my camera. I don't like nonsense. I don't like stuff that is uh, put on an item that doesn't really serve a function. Uh, I'm really zoned in on what we call here in TMP first kind of cool. That is the ability to function and roll very well, to excel at that. Second kind of cool is just uh, how it connects to us. You know, on the second levels, we just love it. It just turns us on. And let me tell you, both of these knives, the Suma and the Premonition, have both types of cool in spades and they're high value. Let's talk specifics, shall we? via the talking points. Keeps me organized. Philosophies of use are gonna be a little bit different for each blade. Again, I use philosophies and not just the term application because it denotes that we've put some thought, some logic behind how we're gonna integrate these into our systems. I think most of the systems these knives will be going into are everyday carry knives. For civilians, for law enforcement, um, you bet. I'll start off with Little Brother. The 1162 Premonition, uh, a great EDC choice. I'm talking seriously great. Uh, one reason, talking about weight, it's only 2.4 ounces. Well done, Jerry. 2.4 ounces? Now we're talking. For an EDC blade, that is what really stokes me. We'll get to all the other positives that the Premonition and the Suma have, but I'll tell you, the, this is a very lightweight knife. And to be honest, for a long time, I haven't seen a knife of this size. This is a 3.25 inch blade that strikes that lightweight in a while. And this is a knife that will disappear in your carry. You just won't even know you have it until you need it. Beautiful EDC choice, this premonition. Uh, definitely not tactical, it's just too small. How about Big Brother though? Uh, yeah, I think it could function in a lightweight self-defense emergency. Never want that to happen. Never, ever, ever. But if it had to, a uh, pretty formidable weapon, I think. It could function that. We'll talk about the traction that the knife provides you. 
Uh, I think both blades, by the way, continuing on with the POU theme, collectible. It's just uh, in my latest videos I've started talking about this, but I'm going to continue to advocate it. That if you knife freaks <clears throat> like me uh, want to uh, really enjoy the blade, establish a low cost collection with blades like this, well under $50. We'll talk about the pricing here in the latter portion of the talking points. Um, but you could have a lot of blades with today's manufacturers, what they're doing, and just have the same level of enjoyment that the supposedly very expensive knife collections give other owners. You follow? That's what I think a lot of TMPers have already done as they follow my reviews and when the price is right and they have the own need in their systems, they go out and buy it. And uh, I've talked to hundreds of guys and gals that do that in the Nut and Fancy Project. It's, it's exciting. It's a sickness. I readily admit it. I love the blade. That's POUs. Uh, so definitely collectible in the sense that they just give you enjoyment, not in the sense they're going to go up in value and become an investment. I just don't think that's going to happen. By the way, the blade on this one, three and three quarter inches. I just did a review, by the way, on a Kershaw blade, a little detour, minor, and it is awesome, this Kershaw blade. Sorry, CRKT, I got to roll this in front of the camera too. <laughs> Love this knife. Okay, look familiar, the Tremor 1950. The reason I'm rolling this out is this also is a three and three quarter inch blade. And in that review, I said it's hard to find a, um, a blade of this size and this mass uh, and have it lightweight. Here comes the exception of the Suma. This sucker only weighs 3.6 ounces. Now, granted, there's a lot of difference going on between the blades. We're talking the width, the grind. So that could be attributed, attributed to some of the weight difference, but my point is it can be done. You can get a very lightweight and functional knife in the emergency tactical role, witness the SUMA. And a lot of reasons as to why that happens. One, both blades are hollow ground. They're not full flat ground. By the way, the, the trimmer was also hollow ground. I do still love the full flat grind whenever I can find it. I think it wears a little bit better and it's just what I like. Don't get me wrong, the deep hollow grinding of both the Premonition and the Suma functions quite well. And by the way, look at this knife, this Premonition, does that blade style look a little bit familiar? Deja vu. Kershaw, oh so sweet. And no, I'm not impl or implying that one copied the other. Absolutely, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying it's a coincidence that they look very similar. As soon as I saw that, I was like, I've seen that blade shape. The Oh So Sweet. That, by the way, is model 1830. Love the Oh So Sweet. And that's a full flat ground knife. These knives are in competition with each other. They are. They are high value, lightweight, overseas produced, everyday carry knives. I love the Oso oh Sweet. Uh, I don't know, just his personal taste, but man, look at the looks on these knives. These McGinnis blades are just gorgeous how they're executed. Goodness sakes alive. The Steel 8CR 14 MOV, very similar to 13 MOV. If you're interested in the differences in makeup, look it up in Google. Suffice it to say, it's very similar to OS 8, what I've said a lot before. I don't have a ton of experience with the CRKT formulation yet of 8CR 14 MOV. I am getting it. I'm going to tell you, well, I'll tell you right now. Um, out of box, I got to say this, here comes a hit on the McGinnis design blades here. They are not sharp out of box. Oh, I told you I had some more guest appearances coming. Here comes the model 1166K. <laughs> nice. The black coated version with the VEF serrations. Man, that's a cool looking knife. Especially in the black. I mean, I love both the satin and the black, but goodness gracious, that is just a handsome looking knife. Good job, Jerry. Uh, what my point in bringing this one out is one, to show it to you so you can see it. Uh, and secondly, to show you that out of box, not sharp. <laughs> That kind of yuck. Yep, by the way, I got the black premonition. This is model, where'd it go? 1163K is in kilo. Also packing the VEF serrations. How's this out of box? 
sucks. Not good. All right, you got to square that away. I know that you're not directly responsible for the sharpening, but find out who is. Correct it. I don't care who the manufacturer is. If the knife comes out of box dull, you are going to hear about it on the Nothing Fancy camera. That's just the way it works here. Hey, where's that magnifying glass? Let's look at that edge. Oh, I like that magnifying glass. That's kind of fun. Let's see. You can kind of see it there. I think, by the way, the relief edge on these is too steep. I don't think I know. And I think sharpening them will be difficult for most users, especially if you're using a ceramic system and you're just going to try to stay with the factory bevel. I know because I tried it. It won't work that great. In fact, this one, the 1162 satin version Suma, I reprofiled it using the Edge Pro Apex or Edge Apex Pro. I always get those backwards. That's the edge I came out with. Where's the paper? Let's see how this does. Uh, pretty good. Oh, yeah. Not bad at all. Now, that's after about 20 minutes of work, though, guys. It shouldn't have to be that way. You should be able to do that right out the box. You follow? Uh-huh. By the way, those VEF serrations, I do not have hard cutting experience in them yet. I apologize. There's only so much time that I have, but I hear good things. My concern would be how delicate are they going to be over time as these raised points, are they going to wear and tear? Don't know. Have to get experience. Back to the Steel though, 8 cr 14 MOV. Uh, pretty good rust resistance, not outstanding. Uh, good edge holding from what I've seen and judging from what I was able to do on that one. Uh, razor sharp, if you get it right. Let's talk about speed. I'm going to use this black one, the VEF one. The speed is excellent. These are flipper designs, dudes. Okay? This video may run a little bit long, but remember, it's a two for one. Two for one. Reviewing two knives in one video. They come out wicked fast. Wicked fast. Love it. They are not assisted. Just a simple flipper design. No thumb studs. Lock up. Awesome solid. Awesome solid. They got, I think, a Teflon bushing on one side, phosphor bronze on the other. Um, really nice. Some guys might mm, criticize the way it lock, or the locking liner right here. It's kind of thin, okay? And I've talked about some other designs are that way. But in the role of EDC, I don't think that will be a player. If you wanted to disagree with me and say, hey, maybe in lightweight tactical, not the best choice. Um, I might be able to say, see that, but look, keep this in mind. I'm putting the word emergency in front of that, which I think most folding knives are anyhow. They are emergency. It's when you have no other choice. It's the only thing you got. You cannot, excuse me, you cannot escape. You cannot get away. Then in that case, hmm, you know, maybe it will work. Uh, let's look at blade centering while we're here. Excellent. In fact, if you were to look at all of these knives, the blade centering... That one's a little bit off, just slightly. Um, let's do the 1163K. Perfect. Perfection. And that's pretty representative. It's By the way, it's rare. I'm going to have four versions of a knife when I put them in front of the camera here. Occasionally that will happen. Not much, so don't expect it all the time. Um, by the way, handle retention. Excellent. The detent holds it well. I'm so glad I remember that. Oftentimes I forget to show you guys... Uh, the retention. So lockup strength I think are adequate for the rolls. You know, remember these are super lightweights. Maybe not the larger one, the small one is. Onto handle materials. That's where it just gets ultra cool. Look at that layered blue black G10. Here in the premonition it's milled out. I just love it. It is gorgeous. Polished micarta. I am a sucker for it. Yep, now it will not provide a ton of traction. Keeping it real, it won't. If you're looking for high traction, no, there's lots of other choices, but I'll tell you what, it it's just gorgeous. This one, look, it's almost pure black. Keep that in mind, the quality you're seeing when I talk about value, which is going to freak your mind cone. Totally. Look at this. Talking about traction in the emergency tactical role, Kind of jimping, it's just a serrated back portion of the blade, and it does work. 
the choil here, you have a little bit of serration there on the flipper. And then, of course, like we see in most designs, the liner, uh, the lo locking portion has some serrations on it. You can see the engagement surface there, how much there is. And while we're here, look at the skeletonizing going on there. Good job, Jerry. Man, I've been harping on that in my reviews for like ever. How hard is it to skeletonize it and save a half an ounce? Well, he did just that on this Suma, and I'll tell you, it pays off big time for the weight. 3.6 ounces for the size of blade is an achievement. Uh, great job on the handle materials though. Love it. Ergonomics therefore are excellent. I think in the write-up on the CRKT site the word, what is it, sinuous <laughs> is used. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. It's sinuous. It's just a very organic, beautiful shape um, on both of these McGinnis design blades. Uh, yeah, he's designer, a designer you might want to keep your eye on. We'll see what he comes up with in the future. Great ergonomics. Here comes another win. The clip. Stainless steel and it's uh, blue titanium nitride coated. How pretty is that? Remember, keep that in mind when we talk about value. Unfortunately, it is one position only. Wow, that like super sucks. Uh, CRKT pretty much always does that. They force the tip down on us. Yeah, I know. I don't like it either. Uh, could you do it multi-positionable on this elegant design? I don't know if you could because you can see how narrow that handle is right there. You definitely could swap it for left and right carry. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. I'm not going to lie to you. Lefties, I don't know if that will you know, turn you off. Uh, I love the clip though. Let's look how it's profile. Decent. Seemed to be strong. I hadn't carried this extensively. I carried the satin finished one. This one right here. And the, also the premonition for a couple weeks. I like carrying them. Enjoyed the heck out of it. And one thing I found is they're very fast to get into action. Because there's no hang up on the, on the surface material of the handle. They come out of the pocket very quickly. Especially you have something like Taclite Pro Pants of 511s. Um, that have that dedicated knife pocket. Wicked fast into deployment. Maybe not quite as fast as a dedicated wave knife. Close though. Durability. Uh, they're new designs. Who knows? You know, uh, and it depends on what you're going to do with it. Will this, you know, the thin line uh, liner lock, will that cause a problem? Uh, I highly doubt it in reasonable use. Um, these aren't like super hard use knives. There's all kinds of other knives I've reviewed that you could use it if you need, need to. Uh, by the way, this steel is called 2CR13, the liner steel. I don't know anything about it. I do know a little something something about uh, 420J, which a lot of makers use, and that stuff is tough. I know because I've tried to drill it out myself and broke several bits in the process. Some of them 100% carbide. So my point is saying a lot of this liner steel, steel is tougher than you would think. Durability I think will be fine. The 8CR14 MOV will be adequate as well. Value. Off the scale, bro. Off the scale. Let's see, premonition, uh, this one right here, the small one. If you can score it, and prices are subject to change, nowadays I am kind of talking prices in the videos, uh, about $21? Are you kidding me? $21 for a knife like this? Now, if you go with the black inversion with the VEF serrations, that's going to be more, probably around $25. And again, it could be more or less. Don't sweat a few bucks, dudes. I mean, if you get it for 27, 28, you're still doing great. Get it for 30, your price doing good. For the amount of knife you're getting, the looks, the polished micarta, the blue titanium nitride coating on the clip. Wow, amazing value. Yes, produced overseas. If you don't like it, there's lots of US options. The Suma, the large version, going to be a little bit more. Satin version is going to be plain edged about $28. I'll ball, ballpark it about $37. Uh, substantially more for the VEF uh, serrations, which I think look really sick. And then the black coating. Any one of these knives represents tremendous value. And if you can't sense it, uh, maybe you're not paying attention. I am very enthusiastic about the Suma and about the Premonition. Uh, huge cool factor for the money you're paying. Uh, people who don't know a ton about knives, or even people who do know a ton about knives, will be probably shocked when they learn the price that you paid for them. Because in appearance, 
all of these blades seem like they're around, in my opinion, about a hundred dollar knife. And CRKT, don't go raising the price now that I gave you a video on it, okay? Just keep the price low, keep the value high, sell lots and lots. Oh, fix that sharpening job while you're at it. How about that? That's really, in the single position clip, that's about the only miss on these knives, which in my, in my estimation is pretty incredible. Um, everything else, the beautiful handles, the color colorations, by the way, those liners, as you've seen all along, also blue titanium nitride coated. Beautiful. Serrations on the back. Nice blade shape. I didn't really talk about that. Good belly. It's hollow ground. Uh, apparently, it does sharpen readily, and you will have to sharpen it out of box. Other than that, huge win for Mr. McGinnis and the CRKT family. That's nothing fancy. It's review. See ya.